movie is incredible. Thank you. So much sexiness. So much sexy. So shocking. I've never seen anything like it. And a whole lot of steamy. And it actually scared me. I actually said no at first. And uh, talked to a friend of mine and said, if it doesn't scare you, what's the point of doing it? I know. So I ran to it. Kelly Rowland recently spilled the tea that she's about to dive into the professional realm with none other than Tyler Perry. But hold on to your hats, because her fans aren't just raising eyebrows, they're straight up worried. So what exactly is going on? Tyler Perry's new legal drama on Netflix, Mia Culpa, promises gripping storytelling and stellar performances. Perry shared his vision for Mia Culpa and his excitement about giving Kelly Rowland a platform to showcase her acting prowess. Perry told MovieWeb, For me, what was important is that I gave Kelly Rowland this moment to shine as an actress, to shine so that everybody can see how good she is and take people on this crazy, unexpected ride that twists and makes you go, what the hell's going on? So that's what I wanted to do. He aims to take viewers on a crazy, unexpected ride that will leave them questioning what's next. Perry also praised Roland's undeniable beauty and her on-screen chemistry with Rhodes, hinting at a thrilling experience for the audience. However, Roland almost didn't accept the role. Why, you ask? Well, in a brand new sit-down, Roland revealed that when she found out Tyler Perry's new film was an erotic thriller, the actress said no to the part. Roland told MovieWeb in an exclusive interview, Tyler's amazing. I remember getting the, oh my gosh, you're Mia, when we were out at a beautiful gala and I didn't know what he was talking about, and he told me he'd send me the script. He sent me the script. I saw it was an erotic thriller, and it scared the mess out of me. And at first I said, no. I called a friend of mine. They said, if it doesn't scare you, what's the purpose of doing it? Roland then told MovieWeb. So I phoned them back and said, yes. Tyler assured me he had me, and would put me, of course, with a wonderful cast. I got Travante Rhodes. We had the most amazing time. I could trust Travante. I feel very safe with him. And I love the character of Mia. I love her, and she's so not me. It was great to walk a mile in her shoes and tell her story. In any case, Perry has made a number of memorable movies, but Mia Culpa evokes a much different mood than either of the writer-director's most recent film projects, A Medea Homecoming and A Jazz Man's Blues. Perry said, This idea came to me because I love all of those older thrillers from the 80s and 90s. It was fun to explore the best and worst of humanity through the genre of an exotic thriller. Roland also told MovieWeb, I've loved erotic thrillers for a very long time. I feel like this is really exciting. I think that being a part of the mystery and sensuality to a character is always going to be something I probably gravitate towards for sure. Perry, who is unquestionably best known for his incomparable array of Medea movies, also also found collaborating with Roland on Mea Culpa, an exhilarating and rewarding creative experience. Perry also said in the same release from Tudum, I never had an experience where I was working with someone who had so many great ideas to bring to the table. As a producer, she was fantastic, and Roland felt the same way as Perry. The actress said, it was just so easy to work with him and if there was ever any moment where he was uncertain about something, he would say, well, let's discuss it and then let's try it. But it was all about communicating. But despite Roland being all giddy about teaming up with Perry, there's some serious gossip brewing among her fans, and let me spill the tea. Word on the street is that Perry's been caught up in some scandalous shenanigans, supposedly getting into wild antics with his inner circle, including none other than the esteemed Bishop T.D. Jakes. For context, on December 21st, 2023, T.D. Jakes found himself in a viral storm, and not for the reasons you'd expect. Here's the juicy scoop. It all kicked off when a TikTok user dropped some serious bombshells about him. So picture this, R&B sensation Cassie Ventura had some bones to pick with her ex, Diddy, and she didn't hold back. She reportedly took her grievances to the FBI, accusing Diddy of some pretty shady stuff during their decade-long romance. But wait, the drama didn't stop there. After Cassie patched things up with Diddy, this TikTok sensation decided to spill the tea. Apparently Cassie didn't just air her grievances, she handed over some serious evidence to the FBI, including tapes from Diddy's infamous parties and even Kim Porter's secret phone. And here's the kicker. According to this TikTok user, there's an email floating around implicating none other than T.D. Jakes himself. Yes, the same guy who presided over Kim Porter's funeral. According to the TikTok grapevine, there's this alleged clip where some dude spills the beans about Cassie's tapes, revealing that Diddy's parties weren't just star-studded events. They allegedly got downright scandalous, with claims of multiple indiscretions and rendezvous with prominent figures like T.D. Jakes. Now hold up, we all know T.D. Jakes, the big shot behind the Potter House Church in Dallas, right? 
right? He's like the ultimate Christian preacher, hobnobbing with A-listers, especially Diddy. Time Magazine dubbed him America's best preacher, and the New York Times showered him with praise. But here's where it gets messy. Diddy and Jake's once tight as can be are now under the microscope after Diddy got hit with lawsuits for alleged misconduct. Diddy used to sing Jake's praises, crediting him with getting him through tough times. They even teamed up in 2021 to broadcast Jake's sermons on Revolt TV. But with this TikTok bombshell claiming Cassie spilled the tea on some unsavory stuff, alleging Jake's was getting up to no good at Diddy's parties, it's a total mind boggler, and the internet's eating it up. Now about that email, it spills some serious tea about the real nature of Diddy and Jake's relationship. Allegedly, Jake's is no saint, he's said to be a Freemason, just like Diddy. But here's the twist. It seems like Jake's may have lost some of his power and privileges, but according to the email, his soul is still in the devil's grip. Scary stuff, right? And there's more. Back in the day, Kim Porter supposedly accused Jake's of some unsavory behavior just a year into his marriage. Rumor has it the whole thing got swept under the rug. Fast forward to 1999, when someone threatened to expose Jake's mysteriously, they vanished. According to the gossip mill, the person was paid off to keep quiet. But two years later, they turned up dead under suspicious circumstances. No names, though. This all allegedly went down at Emmanuel Temple of Faith in Smithers, West Virginia. Locals supposedly claim Jake's has been living a double life for years, with whispers of him being involved with other men and even allegations of an older pastor seducing him. When Jake's hits up Diddy's parties, rumor has it he's throwing back drinks and puffing on cigars in some exclusive corner of the house. But just because it's a VIP area doesn't mean he's flying under the radar. Apparently, he's being watched closely. Oh, and get this. The bishop's wife is nowhere to be seen at Diddy's bashes. And word on the street is she's well aware of what's going down. People are speculating why she's never on the guest list. According to the grapevine, Cassie's in on the bishop's secrets. And Kim Porter found out about Diddy's wild parties from servers who spilled the beans. Kim was reportedly gearing up to expose it all in her book. Crazy, right? Now get this, there's this psychic on TikTok who apparently called all this craziness like two years back. She went on this rant about T.D. Jakes being a Freemason, taking occultic vows, and being in some brotherhood serving Satan as his true boss. According to her, he's using his gifts to mess with people's heads. Oh, and here's the kicker. She predicted that Jakes would be in one of the biggest scandals ever, saying he's not exactly straight, and the whole thing would be about his orientation. 14 Prophecy is a Freemason, that this man has taken occultic vows and that he is part of a brotherhood, that he is serving Satan, who is his true Lord. And the Lord said that Bishop T.D. Jakes will have one of the biggest scandals of all time in the Christian church. While there's no proof to back up the claims against Jake's, this isn't his first rodeo with controversy. Back in 2009, Jake's son, Jermaine, got in hot water for allegedly doing some indecent stuff at Keast Park in Dallas. Fast forward to last year, and there's more drama. Jake's daughter's estranged hubby got accused of some really awful stuff with their adopted daughter. And of course, Tyler is no stranger to these kinds of rumors either. There are also rumors swirling that Tyler Perry might have slipped some cash to TD Jake's to keep quiet about some sketchy business. Remember that million dollar donation to T.D. Jake's church? Well, the grapevine is saying it wasn't exactly for the Sunday collection. It might have been a hush money arrangement. For Tyler Perry, some straight guys are claiming he's pushing them into gay roles, and it's messing with their jobs. So, actor and voice coach Brandon J. spilled the tea on TikTok, sharing that filming just one episode of Perry's Meet the Browns was the toughest gig ever. According to J., a day on Perry's set is like a week's worth of shooting elsewhere. And if that's not enough, he says Perry's notorious for throwing last-minute script changes at the actors, making them memorize on the spot. Jay, who auditioned for the role of Jeffrey, a bullied high school dude, spills it all. So, get this. The actor caught on to Tyler Perry not vibing with the original script, and that meant everyone had to scramble to learn new lines on the spot, all chosen by the big boss himself. According to Jay, Perry went full-on impromptu, rewriting the entire script right there and feeding the lines to the actors. And get this, if you didn't catch on quick, Perry would drop the, you're fired bomb. But it doesn't stop there. As Jay hustles to get those new lines down, Perry decides, out of the blue, that Jay's character is going to be gay and crushing on his high school bully. Yep, not what Jay signed up for at his audition. Perry drops the bomb like, I want Jeffrey to be gay and have a crush on his bully. 
crazy, right? In the second part of the saga, Jay spills that his first reaction was to hit up his agent, who basically said, you don't have to take this if you're not cool with it. But after some serious pondering, Jay decided it was a chance he didn't want to miss out on. So, despite Perry throwing in a last-minute twist and making the character gay, Jay went ahead and played the role. But wait, it gets darker. There's another name in the mix of supposed victims of Tyler Perry, and this time, it's Christian Keyes. On the 16th of December, all the Queen's Men star Christian Keyes broke his silence about years of alleged essay from a powerful billionaire in Hollywood. He says tried to climb in bed with him and offered $100,000 to strip. The actor spoke his difficult truth during an hour-long Instagram Live, where he revealed that he's resigned to taking the scenic route in his career after turning down alleged offers to take his clothes off for money or return to a private residence after auditioning for a role. I didn't sell my soul or my A for success, he confessed. Keyes hopes people will believe him when he names the shady and predatory beloved public figure. He claims to have recordings of the misconduct dating back nearly 20 years. At some point soon, it's going to have to come out. I kept one of these on me since 05, he said, holding up a digital voice recorder pen. Whether it's a keychain recorder or a pen because most predators would check your phone. Once the S harassment started, I was like, I need to protect me. I'm saying no, and I don't want this person, as powerful as they are, to try to get in the way of my work. So I started recording. The Detroit native did not go into detail about who harassed him throughout his decades of acting, but promised to expose them soon. I want to tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. I want to speak on it. The good news is that they don't even have to believe me. Hopefully they do, but if they don't, they can hear this person. Since the essay started, I've carried many recorder devices on me. Keychains, pens, thumb drives, all of the above. I really want to air that ish out because that bothers me when I'm alone at night. Man, the world is celebrating this person and they don't even know the shady and predatory way this person moves. Predators resent the prey that gets away. So when you don't say yes, when you don't say okay, I'll acquiesce and literally and figuratively play ball. Because we not doing that, they resent you. Keyes also said this powerful person felt comfortable with the misconduct because he allegedly claimed he had multiple young black men on the payroll and they would just show up when he requested them to be there. Despite hinting at multiple other alleged victims, Keyes referenced confidentiality and non-disclosure agreements that may keep them quiet. However, he explained that these contracts don't prevent him from turning over evidence of criminal activity. In any case, fans were able to put two and two together and immediately came up with their first suspect, Tyler Perry. In case you're unfamiliar, Keyes got his big break starring in several of Perry's stage plays back in the day, which ended up being the foundation of his billion-dollar production company. The two went on to work in several projects together since 2005, when Keyes says the harassment began and is the creator of the BET series All the Queen's Men, which Perry is an executive producer of. As social media users debated if Perry may in fact be one of the individuals Keyes is hinting at, many argue that he wouldn't be still working with him if that was the truth. Others, however, took the stance that Perry's S has always been questioned, and that they wouldn't be surprised if he's named in Keyes' allegations. Anyway, when he is not busy having shady relations with men, Tyler Perry is busy emasculating them, or at least that's what Dave Chappelle believes. In a 2006 interview with Oprah Winfrey, Dave Chappelle threw out a question, why do we see so many black actors creating and playing female characters. When I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down. Like why all these brothers have to wear a dress? Chappelle dropped some bombshell revelations about how he was once approached to don a dress for a movie alongside Martin Lawrence. He wasn't feeling it at all and made it clear to the producers that it didn't fit the scene's context. However, they persisted, citing examples of other successful actors who had done the same and reaped rewards. Now, Dave wasn't against the idea of wearing a dress on principle, but he saw right through the industry's shady tactics. He felt like they were trying to pigeonhole black artists into doing whatever it took to make it big. And they kept badgering him until they finally realized he wasn't about to budge an inch. This whole ordeal was a real eye-opener for Chappelle. It took being pressured to put on a dress for him to see the bigger picture, that this wasn't just his struggle. Turns out, plenty of other black men had been in the same boat. From Martin Lawrence strutting his stuff in Big Mama's house, to Eddie Murphy's transformations in the Nutty Professor series, and Jamie Foxx's unforgettable stint as Wanda on In Living Color, the list goes on. And let's not forget the Wyans brothers' comedic take in White Chicks. But amidst all this, Tyler Perry takes the cake. Not only is he a heavyweight in entertainment, but he's also got major sway, even in some conservative circles. His Medea franchise? It's not just successful, it's practically iconic. Anyway, Tyler Perry fired back at Dave Chappelle in an interview saying, Look, Chappelle is one of the smartest guys I've ever seen. Not
not just in comedy, but in deep thinking. If that's how it rolls in Hollywood, cool, but that ain't my story. Nobody told me to wear that dress but me. It's my $2 billion franchise and it's always been my choice. I've done 19 movies since then, all by my own call. Maybe it's different for others, but for me, it's like putting on a work uniform. I'm not a guy who enjoys wearing a dress, but as an actor, it's a costume. It's like someone going to Walmart. You put on your uniform. For me, it's about putting on that uniform, going out, making people laugh, lifting them up, and giving them some encouragement. That's how I see it. And then there's Tyler Perry's casting choices and how he portrays characters in his movies. No hiding the fact that black-skinned actors are often cast as the villains in his flicks. Take Steve Harris in one of Perry's classics, Diary of a Mad Black Woman. He's playing Charles McCarter, a successful lawyer who turns out to be far from the ideal hubby. Shockingly, he drops the bomb on his wife about another woman in his life and then proceeds to treat her like dirt, eventually kicking her out. If you've been tuning into Tyler's movies and shows, you might have noticed a trend. A lot of the not-so-nice characters tend to be really abusive towards women. It's a concerning thing that's got people raising their voices. A Fall from Grace, where Crystal Fox plays Grace Waters. She's been through the ringer with her ex-husband's affair and decides to take another shot at love with Maycod Brooks. But to her surprise, as she gets closer to him, she uncovers some seriously dark secrets. Grace's journey takes a twisted turn into love, betrayal, and the aftermath of people's choices. Now, Tyler Perry's movies like Acrimony always stir up discussions on Twitter and other social platforms. Some folks call out Perry for repeatedly showing the struggles of black women dealing with men's actions in his films. On the flip side, others say he's just shedding light on real-life issues that many black women can relate to. So, you know, debates are flying, highlighting how Perry's storytelling gets people talking about some pretty important stuff. One fan said, when will Tyler Perry make black women happy? They are always sad, victimized, and abused in his movies. Why doesn't Tyler Perry want to see black women happy, prospering, and thriving? In any case, when he is not leading men and playing emasculating roles, Tyler Perry has a knack for blackballing actors who do not cooperate with him. And this was the case for comedian Monique. She spilled the tea recently on the Club Shay Shay podcast about how Tyler Perry cost her and her family tens of millions of dollars over a rumor he started about her. She recounted the whole situation Situation, saying that Tyler told her he'd never do anything to hurt her, but then later admitted to starting a false rumor that she was difficult to work with. Monique didn't hold back, expressing her frustration and disappointment, especially after Tyler's initial denial. This drama started way back in 2009 when Monique starred in Precious, a movie produced by Oprah and Tyler Perry and directed by Lee Daniels. The real beef kicked off when Oprah and Tyler decided Monique should hit the press circuit for the film without any paycheck. Monique wasn't having it and straight up said it wasn't part of her contract. According to Monique, she only got a measly 50k for the whole movie, which was barely enough. Now they wanted her to jet around the world promoting the film for free? Not on Monique's watch. But Oprah and Tyler didn't take her refusal well at all. Instead, they started trashing her reputation in the industry, spinning a narrative about her being difficult to work with. Monique spilled the tea, saying Tyler Perry told her, You may want to consider promoting this film because if you get nominated for an Oscar, your next film is three to five million dollars. And if you win it, you're your next film is six to eight million dollars. Monique was like, hold up, I'm a black woman. Where are they paying those salaries, brother? She straight up told Tyler, I can't work for free. I've done what I was supposed to do. I can't go overseas and do this for free. Their back and forth continued, with Tyler saying he doesn't believe in giving money away for free, and Monique firing back, I don't believe in working for free. So we on the same page? It's a classic case of clash in values, and Monique wasn't backing down. He goes on about his spill, you know. I said, well, listen, you can write me the check for me to go overseas. I don't care where the money comes from, but I'm not gonna do it for free. He says, well, I don't believe in giving money away for free. I said, I don't believe in working for free, so we're on the same page. Now, there's a lot of concern among Kelly Rowland's fans because Tyler Perry is such an unpredictable figure. I mean, just look at what happened with Monique. She got blackballed and numerous male comedians faced emasculation. And let's not even get started on Perry's shady dealings with T.D. Jakes. With him, anything could happen. But hey, until these rumors Rumors are confirmed, there's no need for Kelly Rowland to worry about how her collaboration with Tyler Perry will turn out in the end. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.